Hola! Greetings and salutations, folks. It is I, your host, Cinema Kane, coming back at you today. Today, we are talking Deadpool and Wolverine. It's been a while. We've been waiting for a third Deadpool movie, and uh, here we are. The fact that we've got Hugh Jackman's Wolverine alongside the Merc with the Mouth, chef's kiss. This movie has been talked about ad nauseum already for the last month or more that it's been out. I'm only here to pile on the compliments again because it is very much deservedly so. The movie is so much fun. It is, in my opinion, the best of the multiverse movies that the MCU has done thus far. Uh, and yes, I am including Spider-Man No Way Home in that. Uh, because while I enjoyed that movie and thought it was absolutely phenomenal, this movie does so much with what it was given. The fact that Disney finally put an R-rated movie out under the MCU banner. I mean, that's the strangest thing in the world to see at the end of the credits where it says uh, distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. It's like... Wow. That said, Deadpool as a character in the MCU ought to be really, really interesting from here forward because while I know nothing's been confirmed, there's a lot of speculation that he'll uh, appear in both the next two Avengers movies and if that happens, that ought to be really interesting because I'm going to be interested to see how they handle having done an R-rated Deadpool movie but then try to insert him into the PG-13 world of the Avengers. I know it can be done a la Once Upon a Time in Deadpool or, or is that right? Anyway, um, I know it can be done. I'm going to be very curious to see how it's done. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine has always been great, and the characterization as presented this time around, we finally get the comic book accurate yellow suit, but we also get a more tortured version of the character. He's not the exact same Wolverine we've come to know, and as a result, we actually get to see character growth and arc within a Deadpool movie beyond just Deadpool kind of going, oh yeah, that was kind of stupid. I get it. He's supposed to be God's perfect idiot. That's fine. It is fun and funny, but I like that we actually got a character that we were able to grow with. All that said, let's talk about the big old spoiler-filled elephant in the room, the cameos. I have loved X-Men from the moment I started reading comics as a kid. The old um, X-Men series from the 90s, the animated series, introduced me to those characters that I still love to this day. Gambit has always been my second favorite X-Man because he's something, he's both a scoundrel, a card shark, a cowboy, all of it rolled into one beautiful Creole package. And I absolutely love that character. So the fact that we finally got to see what Channing Tatum had been preparing all these years for was absolutely amazing. And as a lifelong Gambit fan, I'm so glad to see that he was actually able to pull it off with as much gravitas as it deserved. Blade was back. Very brief, obviously, but wow. We got Wesley Snipes as Blade on the big screen again. We got Elektra as played by Jennifer Garner again. We got my favorite cameo, Johnny, oh, my second favorite cameo, Johnny Storm from the Fantastic Four. And I love that they did the misdirect where Deadpool thinks he's Cap and he's like, wait, what? Beautiful movie. Absolutely loved it. If you haven't seen it yet and you're waiting to see it, don't wait. Go, go out and see it now. It's so good. It deserves to be seen in the theater. Yes, it'll be just as great at home, but what a fun movie experience this summer. I'm your host, Cinema McCain, and if you enjoyed this, re this review of Deadpool and Wolverine, don't forget to click like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to click that bell notification so you know every time Cinema McCain has a new video uploaded, and don't forget to share this on all your social medias in an effort to help me grow my channel. And I'll see you next time.
at the video store.